of any operation is what you do to undo that operation, right? So what's the inverse of addition? Subtraction. What's the inverse of multiplication? Division. What's the inverse of squaring something? Square rooting something? So the square root of x squared, right? That's how you undo it. When we're talking about exponential functions, when we're talking about having an x or a t or whatever up there in the exponent, the only way that you can undo that, or the inverse of an exponential function, is a logarithmic function. Logarithmic function. And so these problems that we've been solving by guess and check, or that we've been solving using the graphing calculators, once we remind ourselves about logarithms, we don't need that anymore. We can actually just use algebra, just like to undo this, we can do algebra. To undo an exponential, we can do a logarithm. Okay, so that's the whole idea of why do these go together in this chapter. So here's our big definition. What is logarithm? And maybe if you had me for algebra 2 last year, you remember how much I stressed this idea. think that logarithms are something totally different, that it's this whole new operation, but really it's just another way of um, writing an exponent. So there's some rules here, very specific rules. X has to be bigger than zero, and we'll talk about why that's true in a minute. But this number here always has to be bigger than zero. And A has to be bigger than zero, but not equal to one. That's our base here. And when we read this, we say Y equals log base A of X. And that's our base. It's a little number. If and only if X equals A to the Y. Uh, and we're going to rewrite a few of these and remind ourselves of this. But remember that this is kind of like saying what exponent on A gives me this answer. It'll be easier when I throw some numbers in here. But here's the big thing here. A logarithm's answer is always an exponent. So your answer is always like, what exponent gives me this answer? So that's why we say a logarithm is an exponent. Why do we have logarithms? There's this guy named John. And I think he's French. I never really know how to say his name. I just speak it like an American and say John Napier, but I'm sure that's not right. Um, he is the one that came up with logarithms and all the uses of logarithms. And I'm going to remind you about all these properties. Back, I don't know, in the 1800s, they did not have calculators. They did not have computers. So doing long division or doing exponents to a huge power was a very tedious process. Talking about space, think of how big those numbers are. It was a very cumbersome thing to do. And so logarithms were used to make those calculations easier. And on your assignment sheet, I put this big, long quote from his book that he wrote about logarithms. And it's all about how um, logarithms are to make our lives easier. Now that we have calculators and we have computers, we don't really use logarithms in the same way that he wanted us to. But we still have to use logarithms to solve equations. We still use logarithms when we're talking about investing money and using uh, the growth models to figure out how much our mortgage payment's going to be. But his original intention, we don't really use it for that anymore. Um, all right, so here we go. Let's practice some of these. This is where some of you have calculators that do logarithms to other bases. And if your calculator does that, um, you will not be allowed to use that calculator on the calculator portion of the test. So if you have a place on your calculator that you can put log base 2, then you have a calculator that you're not allowed to use. Okay? Because the other calculators don't do it, and it's an unfair advantage. I want you to know the definition of this and how to do it. Yes. The same thing that we did last year. <coughs> because on my calculators, um, there's a log button, and we'll talk about what that means in a minute, but there's only one log button. Um, it's not a place where you can put log base 2 in that. And so, uh, again, if you're not sure about your calculator, see me about it, and I'll, I'll show you. Uh, on your homework, I highly recommend that you're not just using your calculator if you have one of those calculators. Because although that will help you on your homework, um, that's not going to help you on a test if you don't know where this is coming from. Okay? Right, so if I plug this in, I would get log 
62 of 64. And I want you to know this definition up here. That this is the same. You can rewrite this every time like this. So if I look at this definition up here, um, A is my base number over here, is my base over here. So what is A in this problem? 2. And uh, Y is my exponent. Is this the same as Y? Yes, so if I'm just going to put Y, that's where it is. Equals X is your answer. Like, what is here is 64. So you don't have to rewrite this every time. I just want to do it in our notes a couple times to remind you that this is the same as saying 2 to the what power equals 64. And uh, without a calculator, some people kind of struggle a little bit, but uh, powers of 2, let's think about this a little bit. Um, can we figure that out without a calculator? What's 2 squared? Four, so that's two twos. What's two to the third power? Eight, right? We're just multiplying by two each time. What's two to the fourth power? Sixteen. So then if we multiply sixteen times two, that would be two to the fifth power. What's that? Thirty-two. And if I multiply by two again, sixty-four, right? We can do some arithmetic. It's good for your brain. Um, so I believe we could say that this is the same, if you want to think about it like this, uh, this would be 2 to the 6 equals 64. Your answer is, what is that exponent that you're looking for? This is kind of like, you can show this work every time, but there's no need for that. That's kind of like your brain work that you're doing. But 6 would be your answer to that. Notice the answer is the exponent. What do you mean? And we'll look at one in a minute. Uh, this one, if I plug 1 in here, and I think in your homework, they're not actually even written like this, but this would be like saying f of x equals log base 7 of 1. Like just like this. They skip that step. They already put the number in for you on most of them. Again, what I want you to get through today before we get into the graphs is what you should be thinking on this. You should be thinking this is the base, this is the answer, I want the exponent. So in my head, I'm thinking this is saying 7 to the what equals 1. My answer is that y value or whatever that exponent is. Let's say something. 7 to the what equals 1. Right, we did this last year. We did a whole chapter on it in Algebra 2. Questions about that right now? <clears throat> Let's go with a couple others. They're not all that simple, right? They're going to use lots of rules of exponents to make you think. Again, I think you should use the definition, and you should say, this is the base, this is the answer, I'm trying to find my exponent. So this is like saying 10 to the what power equals 1 over 100? 10 to the what equals 1 over 100? What do you know about your exponent if this is not a fraction, but this is a fraction? It's going to be a negative exponent. Um, if you want, you can try to rewrite this as a power of 10 if it helps you, or maybe you just know what the answer is. Um, what gives me 100? What power of 10? 10 squared is 100, but what would give me 1 over 100? This is the same as 2. So you could really write this as 10 to the what. This is actually the same as saying 10 to the negative 2 is 
check on your calculator if you want, but it really is 1 over 100, because um, the negative means move it down, and then you take 10 squared, so your answer is the exponent, negative 2. Let's try this one. really important that you think about the definition. A lot of people are going to look at this one. They're going to see 5 and 25, and they're going to give me an answer of 2, because they're going to think 5 squared is 25, and they're not going to think about the definition. But it's really important that you remember what is the base, what is the answer when you're rewriting this. So this is the base, this is the answer. So this one's saying 25 to the what equals 5. How can you write, um, uh, what does fractional exponents uh, do? What are fractional exponents the same as? It is going to be a fractional exponent. It would be positive, because that's definitely not a fraction. The only time you're going to have a negative exponent is if one's a fraction and one's not a fraction. How does how do these relate to each other? What could you do to 25 to get 5? I could take the square root of it, but I can't do that. I have to have an exponent. And can you write a square root as an exponent? What fraction? One half. You got to know that. You got to remember that all of those roots can be written as fractions. This is the same as saying 25 to the one half power equals 5. So the answer there is one half, not two. So if you're taking a square root or a cube root or a fifth root, yeah, it's whatever the root is, like that's what numbers on the bottom can always. Fifth root would be one fifth. Um, if you're going from something that is a fraction to not a fraction, you're always going to have a negative exponent. Like those are the rules of exponents that we should know, but we tend to forget a lot. Um, but obviously, we also want to be able to do these problems that we are going to use our calculators. So a good portion of your homework is practicing this. But then there's also some homework where you're going to practice evaluating some logarithms. And on the calculators, your calculators that you're allowed to use, you do have a log button. And it just says log, and it does not have a base there. Does anyone remember what base it is when there's no base there? This is log base 10. And the reason that we don't include uh, the number is we call this a common log because we're in the base 10 number system. So base 10 is the log that we like to use. So that's why the button on your calculator is log base 10. And some of your homework today, some of your test is going to be just practicing using that. And again, it's really important that you're able to use your calculator. <coughs> so if I'm just going to do log of 7, I'm just going to type that in my calculator. Right, it, it doesn't even, it knows. Like your calculator doesn't put the 10 in there because that's the only one that your calculator does. And the directions tell you what to round to. I think we're going to go to three decimal places. I didn't write it up here, but in your book they tell you what to round to. <clears throat> and if you type that in, I think you just get point, um, eight four five. And what that's still doing is it's telling you 10 to the what power equals 7, um, which is why it's less than 1, because it's not going to be so pretty to do. So try uh, these two real quick on your calculator.
negative 1.377 on number 6? What about number 7? It shouldn't work when you type it in. I want to know why it doesn't work. If we were going to rewrite this in my base of 10, this is saying 10 to the what power equals negative 2. If you look back at our rules I gave you for the definition of, of a logarithm, I told you this could never be negative. Using the definition, it should make sense. Can you ever come up with an exponent that's going to give me a negative number out of that? Look at our, our exponential graphs. They always look like this. Because there's never a negative number. You cannot get a negative number um, when you take that to any power. So you got to know that. It's really great when you have a calculator. On your test, guarantee I'll give you a question like this on the no calculator portion because I don't want your calculator to tell you it's an error. I want you to know you can't take the log of a negative number. Um, it's not defined. Yes, and not just because of the rule, because it's an exponent. And because the graph of this would look like this, and we know that it never gets below the, the x-axis. But yes, that's why that rule's there. I want to go over a few properties with you today that can kind of help you when you're doing your homework a little bit. Some of these that you don't have to memorize because you can just rewrite it every time. But no matter what the base is, if you take log of any base of 1, your answer, think about rewriting this. This is like saying a to the what equals 1. What will your answer always be? Yeah, because anything to the 0 power equals 1, so it doesn't matter the base. If you see log of 1, your answer is always 0. You don't have to memorize it, but it's a nice thing if you recognize it. Save yourself some time. Same thing with this one. What a to what power will give me a back every time? Yeah. Why is that too? Because a to the what equals a, a to the 1. So. Um, some other things that are true. I don't know if this is spaced out better. I always space it and then I save it and it doesn't space it. The fact that logarithms and exponential functions are inverses of each other means if you take the log of an exponential function or you take an exponential function to a logarithmic power, they're always going to cancel each other out. Just like a square root and x squared cancel each other out. So if I have log base a of a to the x, they cancel each other out and you just get x back. Just like the square root of x squared cancel each other out. And the same thing with this, it's just the other way around. It's exponential raised to a logarithmic, but again, notice the bases are the same, and you just get x back. That's how we can solve these equations. We'll get into that later. And the, the last of these properties is if um, you have two logs with the same base equal to each other, they're the same base and they equal each other, then that means these have to be equal to each other too. It's the only way that could be true. And again, those all come in handy when we're solving these equations later on. We also have a special type of logarithm, right? We had a special type of exponential equation. We had e. Well, the special logarithmic uh, function that goes with that is when you have a base of e. So I want to quickly talk about that for a second. We'll kind of hit this up again tomorrow. But this should not be brand new to you because we did talk about this last year. But if you have the number e as your base, we don't write that as log base e. Right, because it's always the same base. That's the same as saying the natural log of x. And we use ln. We like ln because um, we have a button on our calculator. And it's always the base e, so we can simplify some things. 
So I'm going to show you these properties. They're the exact same properties I just gave you. I just changed them from L logs to LNs. You can use your calculator to do these. You can also use the rules to do these. And we'll talk about the ones you have on your homework tomorrow. But any log of 1 is still going to be 0. That's like saying e to the what power equals 1. This one is saying log of e of e, right? ln is log base e. So if these are the same base, we're just going to get 1 back. Inverses, if it's base e and it's e to the x, ln of e cancel each other out, and you get x back. And if you have ln of x equals ln of y, then x equals y. ln does not have any special rules. It's just a special base. The rules are the same, which means if you're evaluating them, you're going to evaluate them the same way. Unless it says approximate using your calculator, you should be doing these without a calculator tonight. Some of them are some tricky exponent rules. We'll talk about them tomorrow. Maybe look in your book over this LN stuff since we kind of ran out of time a little bit. But I just was going to have you plug them in your calculator. You can do that. But here's your homework. This is 3-3-day-1. Three, three, Most of this should be without a calculator tonight. Twenty-six through thirty-two, they tell you to use the calculator. So 